Updated. I'll talk to the elusive man. The elusive man is waiting for you in the other room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep getting... I keep getting those, like, huge code. Like, I keep getting... They're massive on the screen. It's really hard to miss them this time. Goddamn. All right. Back to the codex. Battle of the Citadel. Citadel convention. Oh. All right, Battle of the Citadel. This one's new, so we might as well. Might as well. Let me get myself up to speed. In 2183, a rogue specter named Saren Arterius attacked the Citadel through a functioning mass relay hidden inside a statue in the Presidium. Saren brought a combined force of Krogan and Geth infantry from Illus, timing the attack so that he would be at the Citadel's controls when the Geth fleet and his flagship Sovereign arrived. In the battle that followed, the Destiny Ascension Dreadnought evacuated the Citadel Council, but ordered the ward's arm closed, sealing them and the Geth inside an impregnable shell, cutting off any reinforcements or escape. The combative tactic would have wholly destroyed the Council fleet were it not for the actions of Commander Shepard, who had followed Saren through the relay from Elos. I lost, whatever. Led by Shepard's ship Normandy. <laughs> my ship? Did you guys at least revive my ship? Why don't you use Lazarus on Norman? The Systems Alliance, 5th Fleet assembled under the command of Admiral Hackett and waited just outside the Citadel's closed arms. Meanwhile, Shepard... I keep pronouncing words weirdly. Shepard fought, fought Saren's forces inside the Citadel and eventually forced the ward arms open again. The Normandy defended the Odyss the descent Destiny Ascension ugh, as it fled, saving the lives of the Citadel Council. Taking its cue from the Normandy, the 5th Fleet supported the withdrawal and took heavy losses from Sovereign's advanced firepower. At about the same time, Shepard killed Saren. Sovereign's once impervious kinetic barrier overloaded, and 5th Fleet focused its military might to shatter the flagship. The Geth Fleet was soon decimated without its leader. In gratitude for the many human lives sacrificed to save it, the Council made the unprecedented decision, or precedented move, to of offering humans the chance to become a Council race. Ambassador Donald Udina and David, Captain David Anderson accepted this honor on behalf of their species. And also, Anderson was the Council leader. Let's start. Let's quick save. I wouldn't keep the elusive man waiting. Well, you're not me. I wouldn't keep the elusive man waiting. Miranda. The elusive man is waiting for you in the other room. Sounds like he... Ooh. 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 <gasps> what? Type. What? Oh, wait. Okay, so I can't... Armor. Helmet. No helmet. Oh my god, there's lore even here to... <laughs> There's lore even here, too. Like, how much do I... <sighs> Alright. Dual layer of fabric. Dual layer of fabric armor and kinetic padding within a lightweight ablative ceramic shell. Comes standard with a suit of communication. Suite of communication, navigation, and battlefield awareness software. Increases off by 5%. Hard sealed to protect. All right, so it's, it just extends the description. Hard sealed to prevent wearer from hazardous environmental conditions. Didn't work the one time you really needed it to, though, did it? And the recon hood. This is like a new increased weapon damage. This is like a new type of armor. I don't think I've seen before. Does not really mesh with the rest of the armor. I don't think the blue really uh is not it. Me don't think. A hood issued to co to covert action teams. The smallest optic display f interfaces with most small arms auto targeting software, linking hand eye, linking hand and eye for improved accuracy and increased weapon damage. Ballistic mesh fabric and composite ceramic plating provide necessary armor, and the integral air filter helps in hostile environments. Let's go with that one, I guess. This is this is armored up, and then we apparently have casual appearance we can change. Chest. We can't change the chest. The anything. Oh, really? I could change. Oh, wait, there's armor customization. The elusive man can wait. I'm customizing myself. 
Interlock on Glades of Thick. Nah, do I really need to read all these? These ones are mostly just the same. Alright, material though. Alright, let's see. This one is kind of shiny. This one is not shiny at all. Well, a lot shinier. It's weirdly or shinier. And this one's not shiny at all. I kind of like, like the not shiny look. Sure, we'll go with that one. I don't think it really matters. Tint. Oh, buddy. I mean, the black and red is, like, iconic. Although, like, the, uh... Like, the really dark red is not a bad look at all, I don't think. Yeah, there we go. That's what I want. down it and this one is ooh, slightly camouflaged oh but doing this we get rid of the red stripe on the top I kind of like the dark red we'll stick with the dark red for now why not or, you know what We'll stick with we'll stick with the default for now, and then later on I'll actually change. I want to stick with I like I like the default. All right, we have the Cerberus outfit. Nah. That was a different Cerberus outfit. Ooh, it's different. Ooh, some uh, like I think that's like scientist wear. I remember a bunch of like the bunch of like the smart characters wearing that. Oh, casual jacket, you gotta love it. And then, yeah, I don't think we have the same definition of casual game. You know what? Let's rock this. Because we're, we're an engineer. We need to... We need to. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll put that on later. All right, quick save. I wonder if we'll be able to, like, unlock more armor later. Like a lot more customization. All right, Mr. Elusive. Oh, we're going, we're entering Tron. The space room. Commander Shepard. I see you don't live up to your name. Elusive man. I thought we'd be meeting face to face. Unnecessary precaution. Not unusual for people who know what you and I know. You know, for someone so elusive, I feel like you'd have like a much more comfortable chair. So what do we know? What exactly is it that you and I know? That our place in the universe is more fragile than we'd like to think. That one woman, one very specific woman, might be all that stands between humanity and the greatest threat of our brief existence. The Reapers. Oh. Good to see your memory still intact. How are you feeling? Hey, yeah, I've been better. I noticed a few upgrades. I hope you didn't replace anything really important. We tried to keep you as intact as possible. We made we your made gameplay Shepherd, feel just more Just as you were when you fun. defeated Sovereign. What are the Reapers doing that made you decide to bring me back? We're at war. No one wants to admit it, but humanity is under attack. While you've been sleeping, entire colonies have been disappearing. Human colonies. We believe it's someone working for the Reapers, just as Saren and the Geth aided Sovereign. You've seen it yourself. You've bested all of them. That's just one reason we chose you. So, what's up with Cerberus? Fighting a war doesn't seem like Cerberus. Why are you involved? We're committed to the advancement and preservation of humanity. If the Reapers are targeting us, trying to wipe us out, Cerberus will stop them. If we wait for politicians or the Alliance to act, 
no more human colonies will be left. Yeah, going behind, doing, doing, doing things your own way is kind of what led to like the, like the first game with Saren, kind of, you know, like ignoring politics and all that, so on and so forth. So like, you've been stealing people, and I kind of like stopped you in the past, but like you know. Sovereign was trying to harvest all life in the galaxy. Okay, well, why would no, the Reapers I, I, target a few human? I meant that actually. Hundreds of thousands of colonists have vanished. I'd say that fits the definition of harvesting. Nobody's paying attention because it's random, and the attacks occur in remote locations. I don't know why they've suddenly targeted humanity. Maybe you got their attention when you killed one of them. Yeah, that'll do it. So let's talk about, like, Alliance. If this is a threat against humanity, you need to mobilize the Alliance. They suffered substantial losses fighting Sovereign. Their rebuilding still stretched too thin to waste resources verifying the Reaper threat. Blaming the abductions on mercs and pirates is easier and more convenient. <sighs> Typical. Let's... Uh, why me? You could have trained an entire army for what you spent to bring me back. You're unique. Not just in ability or what you've experienced, but in what you represent. The player You character. stood for humanity at a key moment. You're more than a soldier. You're a symbol. And I don't know if like the Reapers Prince. understand fear, but you killed one. They have to respect that. <sighs> All right, where do we start? If you're after the Reapers, just point me in the right direction. Miranda was worried you'd be resistant. She's not usually wrong. Uh, I have a shuttle ready wrong, to then. take you to Freedom's Progress. That's the latest a hype name abducted. for a colony. Miranda and Jacob will brief you. So like, well, yeah, I guess it would be pretty stupid not to trust the brute, considering they have done the opposite of betray me. And I'll still keep my eye on them. So what are you expecting of me What to do you find? think I'll find there? Close. If I knew that, I wouldn't need to send you. Okay, great. Find any clues you can. Who's abducting the colonies? Vampires. Do they have any connection to the Reapers? I brought you back. It's up to you to do the rest. No pressure. So like... Okay, see ya. Well, I leveled up at least. And I'm a scholar, apparently. And I'm a new scholar, apparently. And I have experience. And a new journal update. That's pretty annoying. <laughs> I won't I won't lie, that's... And I have the journal updated again. Yeah, that's pretty annoying. Is there a way to talk, like change how many times those appear? Ugh, all right. We leveled up, let's do something about that. We have two points. Ah, uh, squeaky chair. Sorry about that. I we could upgrade incinerate and cryoblast. Yeah, she will done the first level, so those two, why not? So now we could do a big old fire. It's very good against armor, bad against robots. Well, no, I think the I think the incendiary bullets were bad against robots. I don't. It doesn't say it here. Stops health regen. I don't think the. I don't think robots have that. I'm just using robots for non-organic. Deal with it. And cryoblast just freezes them in place. All right, cool. Journal. Prologue. Awakening. Investigate the missing columnists. Your ship is waiting for you in the hangar bay to take you to Freedom's Progress. And investigate. Colony, Freedom's Progress, I-8, Assignments, nope. And then the Codex, we have Organizations. Immediate, the reclusive tycoon calling himself the elusive man is a human nationalist focused on advancing human interests, whatever the cost to non-humans. The Citadel uh -huh. Council regards him as a fanatic, posing a serious threat to galactic security. Yeah. A mysterious maverick, to say the least. The elusive man heads the Cerberus Network, Dubbed the Elusive Empire by investigators, Not really Cerberus that creative is an allegedly an untraceable syndicate of private intelligence agencies, biotics laboratories, engineering and scientific research teams, and lucrative front companies. Branded a terrorist and seditionist oh, organization great. by authorities, Cerberus is the only human power base other than the Terra Firma party strong enough to embarrass 
if not threaten, the Council and its human representatives. The Terra Firma Party, we learned about them at the, like, very end of uh, Mass Effect 1, it seems. And the Terra Firma were basically the same thing as the Elusive Man, except with politics. I believe. Very human centric, or Earth centric, or something along those lines. Tell me about Freedom's Progress. Freedom's Progress Colony was once a typical Alliance settlement. But following complete communications blackout and its apparent destruction, <laughs> is now a lightning rod for anxiety and dread in the galactic human community. The communications blackout followed an upgrade of the colony's small military force, supplemented by mechs and security drones, with high-powered tower-mounted guardian lasers. Oh. Colonists complained about construction cost overruns, delays, noise, and damage to the local environment. They also feared the defense array could be seen as provocative to their world's neighbors. Such fears may not have been baseless. Authorities have still offered no explanation for the communications blackout, fueling rumors of plagues, natural disasters, or a cult-inspired mass suicide. Oddly. Located in strategically insignificant space, Freedom's Progress Colony had once offered residents spectacular rainbows, lush marshlands, and stunning mountain ranges. Its potential as an agricultural settlement and tourism wonderland rivaled that of any Alliance colony. It was beautiful and then they all died. Oddly, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not accurate, because I don't know what's happened yet, but oddly... Descriptive, maybe? I forgot the fucking word. Come on, me. I'm stupid. Ah, whatever. Odd that that would be brought up. I, I, I think I'm trying to say. Alright, I'm back. Did we really have to fly all the way here? Well, I'm currently. What is my. Not the uh, squad. Just checking to see how. Our renegade is compared to our paragon after all those. The elusive man is very impressed with you. Is he? I'm eager to see if you can live up to his expectations on this mission. Huh. I'll do my best. Don't worry. We'll find out what happened to those colonists. Well, at least you're confident. Let's hope it's not misplaced. I never misplace anything. Uh, where are all of my weapons? Speaking of which. Do you have a problem with me? For someone who spent two years putting me back together, you don't seem real fond of me. I have the utmost respect for your abilities, Shepard. It's your motivations that concern me. I believe in what Cerberus stands for. Only time will tell if you prove to be an asset or a liability to our cause. Your cause being humanity survives. Well, you know what? That's one of my highest priorities alongside every other race. So, like, what's up with this? What do you think about the current What can you tell me about this colony we're going to? Freedom's Progress? It's a typical human settlement in the Terminus systems. They had a small military force for protection supplemented by mechs and security drones. Average in almost every way, really. Completely unremarkable. I hear the Until the disappearance. Any, any, any ideas? Any thoughts on what we might run into there? A lot of empty buildings and one giant mystery. Succinct. So, like, how cool is being able to revive a person? I'd like to know more about the Lazarus Project from the person in charge. I wasn't in charge. The elusive man was. Ooh. If I was running the show, we'd have done a few Sorry. things differently. Such as? What would you have changed? To start, I would have implanted you with some type of control chip. But the elusive man wouldn't allow it. Nice he was afraid it might affect your personality, alter your character somehow. He wouldn't let us do anything that might limit your potential in any way. You're doing a really good job of making me not trust you. I'm glad that he wasn't. Well, let's just not say that, actually. I'm not, I don't know how I feel about either of you, really. Uh, I have a question for you, and the main question is, why do you have, like, the highest heels ever on what seems to be, like, a jumpsuit? Tell me a little about yourself. Worried about my qualifications? I can crush a mech with my biotics or shoot its head off at a hundred yards. Take your pick. Um, I'm gonna choose the shoot its head off at a hundred yards. That was interesting. Uh, 
Can I have more than that? I was trying to get to know you as a human being. I'm not looking for a friend, Shepard. Too bad. Stay focused on the mission. Where'd you train to shoot a mech a hundred yards away? Did you and Jacob serve together in the Alliance? No. The elusive man recognized my potential and recruited me at a young age. Seriously, How old were you? Old enough to know this is what I wanted. Okay, well, I guess that's it. It's obvious you're not interested in talking. We've got an assignment. We can talk about it, or we can do it. I just keep getting, like, the same amounts of Paragon and Renegade. I'm perfectly neutral. Hey, oh, Jacob. I'm glad the elusive man convinced you to join us, Commander. Oh, well, I don't really have much else to do right now. Also, I'm more here for the colonists. I just want to find out what happened to those missing people. I still don't trust Cerberus. Noted. Do you trust me, Commander? Uh. I haven't made up my mind about you yet. At least you're giving me a chance. Most Alliance soldiers hate Cerberus on principle. So what do you think about what we're doing? Do you know anything about this colony we're going to? It's called Freedom's Progress. Don't know much else. I guess we'll find out when we get there. She used to be a part of the Alliance. You said you served the in the Alliance. Side. Five years in total. Stationed all over the galaxy. Even spent a couple of years as a Corsair. Whoa. What is that? That's a brand of keyboard. I've never heard of the Corsairs. It was an Alliance initiative. They hired independent Starship captains and used them for missions that fell outside official Alliance jurisdiction. The Technically, Alliance we seems weren't to have part a lot of, of Alliance. Outside if we ever got caught, they could groups. disavow any knowledge of us. We were supposed to be free from restrictions and rules. But there was still enough That's red a... tape to sink a cruiser. I finally just gave up. Uh -huh. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of alliance organizations that just so happen to fall outside jurisdictions. Corsairs, the Spectres, I guess the Spectres are more. Well, whatever. So, now you're a part of Cerberus. Why did you join Cerberus? I guess I just got tired of never making a difference. So much of what we did in the Alliance seemed pointless. I thought things would change after the attack on the Citadel. Humanity was finally invited to join the Council. Nothing changed. Politics, bureaucracy, same bullshit, different leaders. Cerberus is different. When colonies go missing, we don't commission a team to write a report to figure out what the hell to do about it. We just go and find out. That I can respect. Same That's up. all for now. Yes, ma'am. That time I got more pairing on. I'm no longer neutral. Yeah, one thing I definitely want to uh, commend is that the, 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 the facial animation seems to have gotten a lot better since last time, which is neat. Well, we have about five minutes left in this episode. Eh, let's get going. Might as well. Oh, God, it's loud. This is interesting. Oh, I got a bunch. I got a bunch of stuff for her. Oh, we start at level five. Okay, so. All right, that's. Yeah, for some reason. I've always known that this game had like a, a import character from last game setting. And for some reason, I always expected it to be. Oh, yeah, I know. You just. You just play the exact character. You start at level 56 again. I don't know why I thought that. But this this makes a lot more sense. You just get like a little bit of boost in experience and then a lot of other stuff. Interesting. Also, we found a grenade launcher. Is an enemy's health bar? We should be there shortly, Shepard. The elusive man put us under your command. Do you have any orders? Uh, can both of you, like, put on a helmet? I feel kind of overdressed. Uh, any other colonies what around? What did you find at the other colonies? Or that, actually? Nothing. No signs of attack, no corpses, not even a trace of unusual genetic material to give us a clue. They just disappear. And we've got no target to go after. It's so, like, are you gonna, like, follow my orders? Are you sure you'll be comfortable following my orders? We didn't bring you back from the dead just to second guess you, Commander. You sure? If the elusive man says you're in charge, you're in charge. So, like, what are the chances we all die as soon as we land? What makes you think this investigation will turn up anything new? Or that? At other colonies, official investigators got there first. Sometimes looters or salvage teams as well. 
We're hoping to be the first ones there this time. Maybe find clues before somebody else disturbs the scene. Third third question. Can somebody like give me a phone so I can like call like anybody? Garrus, Rex, Liara, Tali. Okay, that's there we go. I remembered. <laughs> I, I want to find people. Alive. Our first priority is to look for survivors. That's unlikely, Commander. No one was left at the other colonies. You know what else was they were completely Me deserted. Coming back to life. Be nice to find somebody. Anything's better than another ghost town. Uh, should the thing be sparking like that? I still feel overdressed with this helmet on. Can either of you? Okay. New weapons. Uh oh. All right. So now we have. Ooh, hold on. Actually, can we go into here and can I move these around? I can. All right. Let's keep my. Let's keep my main ability on one, so I use that the most because I like it. This one's... Yeah. Yeah, it's fine for now. So I have my drone and then three different types of explosion on three through four. Or two through th four. And then I have a revive. You, Miranda, have two different types of pistol. A machine pistol and a heavy pistol. Effective against armor, weak against shields and biotic barriers. Fires three round bursts, very effective against shields and biotic barriers, weak against armor. Oh, ooh, I also have a pistol now. Ooh. Alright. And you keep your shotgun, because I like it. Okay, this thing is definitely for close range. Or for yeah, close range. Has no range whatsoever. Swapped it. There we go. Yeah, that's that's neat. And I also have a grenade launcher for free, basically. All right, so you have warp and overload. Hold on, let's. The last thing we'll do for this episode probably is level everybody up. We have no points. Jacob has one point. We don't can't put that into anything. So let's go on to Miranda, who is a Cerberus officer. Combat's Miranda propones Miranda's combat skills, weapon damage, and health. Entire squad receives a combat bonus. Whoa. Increases her health and weapon damage, and her tactical expertise gives a combat bonus to the entire squad. Squad deal 2.5% more damage. Yeah, I definitely want that. At least one point of it for now. I could just put all my points into this right now. Miranda's, yeah, just doubles everything. All right, what does Overload and Warp do? Overload, uh, that's just the bomb that I have. Warp rips enemies apart at the molecular level and stops health regen, effective against armor and biotic barriers, huh? Detonates antibiotic powers already affecting the target. Let's just pull more singularity, causing further damage. Ooh! Yeah, just buy both points. It also stunts my enemies. Sure, we'll, we'll put points into all there. So now they both have one point, and I have the one. All right, and I'll look at them. It looks like getting like to the fourth tier of some of these does like some really cool stuff that I want to know more about, but I don't. I won't spoil it right now. I'll, I'll, I'll keep that information for later. I am so... I'm so into this already, and I'm so glad that the gameplay seems to be, like, much more fine-tuned and fun and satisfying. Being able to, like, blow those bots' head off was so nice. I'll see you all next time. We'll go through that door. And I'll you'll probably kill some more people and explore. Look at this quarry area. See you later. <laughs>